Well, like, so uh, the video here that I just uploaded, Graham Campbell, have no idea how I managed to stumble across a, <laughs> an hour plus video, which he uh, was a guest appearing on, where he would start talking about the Building Racial Literacy Program. Building Racial Literacy in and of itself kind of gave a pretty in-depth definition of what it really means, kind of reaffirming what I've been saying for some time anyway. Um, he then even goes so far as to recommend the Anti-Racist Educator as a website uh, towards the end of his appearance. Nonetheless, um, the reason that I'm showing that the now is because this is effectively another video on the same subject, but the video uh, that I uploaded was starting to get a bit too long, so I'm just going to do it separately. But the point in case, though, is that this Building Racial Literacy Program is continuously uh, thrown about the place as if it's simply a means to oppose racism, hence why they hide behind the facade of anti-racism. But Graham Campbell in this video does exactly what I've been doing for some time in showcasing and highlighting what it really means, and uh, there's a few things that I want to go through that uh, have come to my attention over the course of the last day or so. Uh, relatively new stuff as it goes. It seems that the uh, critical race theorists themselves, the ones that kind of went into hiding a month or so ago, they've crawled back out from under their rocks and they're just promoting the same nonsense again. Um, and it is remarkable how this seems to be spreading like wildfire, but on top of that, <laughs> the positions that these people seem to be finding themselves in, it's one thing to be on government panels and whatnot, which they are, uh, but you know, Kajida Muhammad, for example, works for the General Teaching Council of Scotland. Mizut Utamani works for the EIS now. Malina Val de, de whatever she works for Education Scotland. You know, and they're the three main uh, front runners for pushing this nonsense. But you know, some of the people that have been part of their initial cohort, um, the first round, shall we say, they've gone on to do other things as well. So I'll come on to that, but just to refresh anybody's memory that might not necessarily be aware, Building Racial Literacy, of course, this is on uh, Education Scotland's actual website. Um, and it's, this is the Building Racial Literacy. It promotes anti-racism. Oh, that's, that's all it is. It's just simply anti-racism, you know. Uh, as a baseline professional value, empowering educators to identify and implement anti-racist behaviours and processes in their everyday practice, with the ultimate goal being for the programme to make every educator in Scotland racially literate, effective at dealing with racism and confident in leading anti-racism. Right? As I say, it's really beginning to grow arms and legs at this point. Point in case, this is uh, just one of a few examples that I've got here. This is from the General Teaching Council of Scotland's magazine. And who have we got here? Oh, we've got my favourite boo-boo, Kajida Muhammad. And her little opinion piece is called Talking or Taking Action Sorry on Racism. Following up by saying that talking about how race and racism manifests is not only good practice, but it also upholds children's rights. And I'm not going to read through the entirety of her bullshit because it's not really anything that she's not said a thousand times before. Um, near enough verbatim in some instances as I scroll through it. I do love this bit here though, I, I have to highlight this because this is Kajida Muhammad over the back, really. This is what they're always about. These are the same people that tried to insinuate that just a month ago they were the victims of racism all over Twitter, but yet here's an example of total hyperbole. She says here that my experience as a BAME teacher was of going into schools where the majority, if not all children, teachers and parents had a white ethnic identity and trying to fit in. But suddenly, a critical incident takes place. Critical being the operative word. A terrorist attack. The case of Sheku Bayou. A terrorist attack. Now, admittedly, the case has been reopened, as people are aware, to figure out whether or not Sheku Bayou died because of the fact he was black. How they're ever going to prove that, I don't know. But that's what the investigation seems to be angling for, finding out one way or the other. But that's not concluded yet. And even if it does come back and suggest that he was killed and there was a racial motivation behind it, Still a bit of a stretch to suggest it's got anything to do with terrorism. But the fact is that it's not even concluded yet. And here she is just writing that so matter-of-factly that it's a terrorist attack. And then she finishes off that little section here by saying, microaggressions unfold. So it was a terrorist attack and then microaggressions. <laughs> These are more than just throwaway insensitive comments. Your English is really good, or where are you really from? They include more specific remarks that cause pain and are linked directly to a BAME, 
person being a member of a racialized group that's subjected to stereotypes or discriminated against, you realize you can't fit in because you can't change the color of your skin. Racialized, of course, because they ran with the narrative that race doesn't exist. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to scroll past some of her shit because it's not really that much different to what you would expect coming from her. Um, but she then mentions... Yeah. Nationally, we now have the Race Equality and Anti-Racism in Education program, which is what gave birth to the Building Racial Literacy program, which is looking to address race inequality in schools. Define it. We're talking about disparities, of course, and there's not enough brown and black teachers. There has been underreporting of racism in schools because of a lack of confidence in the reporting and supporting mechanisms. Racism doesn't fall under the bullying category or other option. It's racism. As soon as we acknowledge that it, that it immediately has implications for how the profession is going to deal with this. How head teachers hold this space will have implications for the whole school community. It is important for us to adopt anti-racist practices as it aligns with our professional standards. And here's her again hiding behind the facade of anti-racism. That's not what she means at all. But if we scroll down a bit further, right, and she starts saying here, I think we are the only profession which implicitly refers to anti-racist practice in its standards. If social justice is at the heart of everything we do, we need to acknowledge that racism exists. We need to take critical action. Critical being the operative word again, but just backtrack ever so slightly, because in order for her to be able to prove, or people like her to be able to prove that racism exists, they have to redefine it. And that's what they're doing. They'll point to slavery several hundred years ago, and they will say that that same attitudes that existed back then still exist today. Proof disparities. That's the sort of rhetoric that we're going with here. This is where the tension lies, as people are fearful of where to start, or are nervous about offending or getting it wrong. As a profession, we have standards that should clearly shape our values and inform our practice. So why are we still overreactive? We hold on to the view that there was no problem here until a racist incident takes place or a BAME family joins the school. If we really stand true to our standards, embedding anti-racist principles should underpin our teaching, irrespective of the ethnicity of the young people and teachers in our school. <laughs> this is what she always angles for this. This is what they're all pushing for. They want this crap everywhere. They want this critical race theater shit absolutely everywhere. When the reality of the matter is they pretend that this has been done to rectify the you know the shackles and the oppression the beams are eternally suffering from and the reality of the matter is though this is a pervasive ideology that has one thing and one thing only in mind long term for many of these people some might argue revenge is also a secondary point there to to bring up but it's, it's more about power at the very bare minimum it's about power uh, and well, I'm dismantling our societies in the process and rebuilding them in an image that's more reflective of themselves. It is even more important to discuss and disrupt the status quo in schools where children are predominantly from a white ethnic identity. Is that right, you know? <laughs> it's just remarkable. By avoiding conversations about race or racism or failing to unpack the history of our colonialism, we are doing the children a disservice. How then, uh, how then are we supporting them to become critical thinkers uh, in and around issues of social justice? And why are we promoting social justice? Oh, that's right, because the professional standards that it mentions up here, <laughs> that instructs teachers all across Scotland to promote social justice and inclusion and diversity and immigration, etc. And anti-racism, of course. Sustainability, global citizenship, to name a few. For me, talking about how race and racism manifest is simply good practice. Um, which is both race, sorry, simply uh, good practice, which is both race, cogni uh, both race cognizance and culturally responsive. It's true differentiation. It's upholding children's rights. Just because the same people that share your belief system put it into the rules, the professional standards, that this has to be taught in schools, that doesn't mean that you can then turn around after the fact and say, we're simply we're simply upholding their rights. Yeah, but it was people like yourself that included it for better or for worse, <laughs> you know. But then at this bit at the bottom as well, it says, The racist Twitter comments my colleagues and I received after the Scottish Learning Festival highlights how anti-racist education is even more important today. Here we go again. The reality of the matter is, 
people called out the fact that you were masquerading your critical race theater shit under the guise of simply promoting anti-racism. Then when you get called out, you can't respond, you all malfunction, you then revert to defensive mode, block your Twitters, etc. Run away and cry and get the S&P to circle the wagons for a couple of weeks. Now you're back to tell us all that because of the nasty things that were not even said to you, you that justifies the continuation of the very program that led people to call you out to begin with. Yeah, okay. Oh, where are we now though? Then we've got this one. Um... Yeah, here we go. Two seconds. So here's another one. Catherine de Souza, a teacher at Newark Primary School, primary school by the way, um, Port Glasgow, and Carrie McWilliam, an English teacher at Speyside, Arbor Lauer, at this year's joint reception at the Cheryl Love Award for a pioneering spirit in equality and diversity. They both won awards. Katie is truly a pioneer for her school and local community. Her People Voice anti-racism group campaigned for quality and diversity, creating anti-racism posters to be displayed around her school, community and visiting local businesses to share their learning and promote their anti-racist message and of course anti-racist predicated on what notion, well the racism that they're opposing is the redefined variation of racism. Oh. Katie joined Education Scotland's Building Racial Literacy Programme. Of course, of course she did. She said, I was initially concerned that I would not be academic enough to add value, however, committed to fully immersing myself in the learning. It is fair to say that I have lived, breathed and acted upon my learning since embarking on the programme. My enthusiasm seems to be contagious and my colleagues are making small but impactful changes to the practice, increasing visibility and representation of minority groups and looking for more inclusive resources. Of course. Nominated by her head teacher. Uh, who said about her, Katie has been a pioneer for our school community on our journey to building racial literacy. <sighs> Fucking hell. And it says here, the majority of our school population and indeed town is of white Scottish ethnicity. We have a small number of new Scots families who have come to our school over the past few years and although they have been welcomed by almost all, there have been incidents of racism in school and the community which they were the catalyst for change. The 2011 census recorded that black and ethnic minority uh, population of Scotland was at 4% and it is the Scottish government's ambition that by 2030 the teaching profession is reflective of society. Yeah, this is what they did. You know, I've mentioned this a few times before but it's, it's even more preferable when it's in black and white. That's proportionate representation, so at least 4% of the Scottish teaching workforce, according to that census, would have to be 4%. But then when the next census comes out, and when that's inevitably gone up in percentage points, so let's just say 5 or 6% or even 10% non-white, that means 10% of the teaching workforce has to be non-white. And because it's not currently matching the census statistic or the census percentage point, that is an indication of racism. And that has just got to stop. It's systemic. It's proof. You know, it's just a fucking joke. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then we got this carry one, one here who's promoting the legation. <laughs> Pardon my French. Um, but then there's another one as well. This one's a bit more sadistic in truth, just because there's a lot of information here. But we've got uh, building racial literacy. Gemma Water started her education journey by comp completing her degree in English and education in Brighton before working in London um, before coming up to Scotland and gaining her qualification as a teacher. Having grown up in London, Gemma was used to a diverse population. Um, <coughs> however, one of the leaders... Uh, no, sorry. When I was doing my PGDE, I was one of the only people of colour in my cohort. While all of my classmates were lovely, I felt odd. It's an interesting thing to suddenly feel very seen, very visible and very different, right? But let's just get to the, the point here. In 2021, of course, Gemma was a participant in the Building Racial Literacy Programme, run by Education Scotland and headed by Melina. The project made her feel empowered to act. People don't like to talk about race. It's, diff it's a difficult thing. There's a lot of emotional baggage. And this seems to be like a common theme with all of them. They, 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 they participate in this program, then they come out the other side of it and they think that nobody wants to talk about it the way that I want to talk about it. And it's because it's, you know, it's difficult for them. That's because it's a concept that nobody has fucking heard of apart from people like yourselves. You know, the vast majority of people 
just don't really give a shit about race, really. And when asked to define racism, they'll probably reiterate what it says in the dictionary, but that's not acceptable here in 21st century rainbow unicorn land because everything's about redefining words. Anyway, just gets a bit more malevolent down here. So, Black Lives Matter movement gets a mention, of course it does. When Gemma first joined Smithycroft, she approached her head teacher about setting up an anti-racist school club. Aha, oh, well, I bet you did, I Wonder why you did that. Is it cause, because Melina's little uh, program instructs all of the anti-racist uh, types that join the program to inevitably, via their action plan, set up these school clubs. Anyway, but initially, of course, there were questions like, should we call it an equalities club? Or, or can we have a group just for young people of colour? So I had to be a bit brave, and I felt strongly that it needed to have this anti-racist stance. It was important to ensure that we looked at making a safe space for people of colour, because that's what they fucking need, apparently. People don't like to talk about race. It's a difficult thing. Uh, part of the safe space Gemma is creating within the school is to encourage learners to ask questions and increase their understanding of issues surrounding racial equality. Another thing that's been redefined. It comes back to the issue of people not liking to talk about race and we need to break that barrier down. Learners feel comfortable coming to me to ask. I heard this thing, is it okay to say? And we can talk about it openly. The young people who come to the club are so verbal and good at explaining what they stand for and why. And the majority of the members are white. And it allows them to understand and empathise with experiences of people of colour. Gemma also teaches English in the school and has been weaving more diversity into her classroom teaching. You know, and she's allowed to do what the hell she wants, apparently. Last year, she put on a diverse author series with funding from the Scottish Book Trust. There were 10 speakers over the year, including authors of colour and people from an LGBT background, of course. So, Rosa Sally was one, um, Tawoni Sitho, whoever the fuck you are, um, etc. But then, of course, it finishes up here. I want to help more people to feel empowered to speak up and take an anti-racist stance and improve equity across education. At the start of this academic session, Gemma started her School of Activism, part of a wider drive in the school to upskill students and prepare them for the world of work. She takes first years, who are 12, uh, one period a week for six weeks. They discuss topics such as privilege, intersectionality, and calling in versus calling out. So she's teaching 12 year olds once a week for six weeks about intersectionality and privilege. We're trying to embed that knowledge of social conscious, citizenship and activism within the school body. So again, politicising children, standard procedure in Scotland. It aligns with our school value of we belong, which is hugely important to our school's ethos. <laughs> The young people at Smithycroft are now looking at setting up a forum which brings together other groups in the school such as the LGBT group and also autism support group. I think learners are really grasping how activism can be an everyday thing as opposed to just protesting against something. So you're politicising children. That's what's happening here. A focus across Smithycroft this year is de decolonising the curriculum and it will be part of everyone's ongoing professional learning to ensure that their curriculum is varied and not from one singular often white western perspective. <laughs> wow, fucking wow. Um, what else have we got here? It says that Gemma is running two professional learning sessions for colle colleagues in Glasgow. She's heavily involved in the Party 22, promoting anti-racism together in education events this October, and was on a panel discussing barriers to attainment at this year's Scottish Learning Festival. She was recently promoted to acting principal teacher of equity through Glasgow's Diversity in Education initiative that gives management experience to BAMES and BAMES only, and is facilitating the next two cohorts of the Building Racial Literacy Programme run by education. Education Scotland, you know, so she's now effectively, uh, she's passed the test with flying colours, Melina's little programme, now she's effectively Melina Junior, except she's twice the weight. I want to help more people to feel empowered to speak up, take an anti-racist stance via my anti-racist, uh, or no sorry, via my building racial literacy programme, you know, and then um, we get another bit here where they make reference to the Scottish Learning Festival, several professional learning sessions focus on anti-racism and diversifying the education profession. Material from the session was posted on Twitter and this led to a series of racist comments directed towards a uh, general teaching council of Scotland's colleagues and others in the teaching profession. You know, it was people calling out this shit right here, you know. 